We are three in one and one in three. We are body, mind, and spirit. Our quest as evolutionary beings is to master each of these three aspects of our being so that we can evolve physically, mentally, and spiritually. Mastering and harmonizing these three aspects is the key to achieving total well-being. Integration is the pathway to mental, physical, and spiritual harmony and the only way to progress on our evolutionary journey. On this path, you will experience physical, mental, and spiritual well-being by mastering and harmonizing your body, mind, and spirit. As three in one and one in three, you will lighten up by purifying your body, liberating your mind, and unleashing your creative spirit. As you master and harmonize your body, mind, and spirit, you will begin to unleash your highest potential in every aspect of your life. Are you ready to lighten up? Welcome to Lighten Up. Evolutionary Wellness for the Body, Mind, and Spirit. Here are your co-hosts, inspirational author, motivational speaker, and wellness expert, Suzanne Ross, and Susie Garcia, award-winning registered dietitian and international best-selling author. Let's welcome Suzanne Ross and Susie Garcia. Hi, I'm Suzanne Ross, and welcome to Lighten Up the uplifting series that will help you experience total well-being by engaging in practices to enhance your body, mind, and spirit. And I'm Susie Garcia, very excited to be the co-host of this exciting show where you're going to learn about something called evolutionary wellness. Yes, today we are going to explore the concept of evolutionary wellness. Several years ago, I set out on a quest to discover the true meaning and purpose of life. And what I found is that the meaning of life is simply to create and the purpose is to evolve. It became apparent to me that we're here to create meaningful experiences that will help us to progress on our evolutionary path. When it comes to creating and evolving, we have two choices. We can either allow our experiences to unfold randomly and just hope we're making progress along the way. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> Or we can choose to consciously evolve by creating experiences intentionally. Maybe you've had that experience of just feeling like you're blown around and just randomly hoping that things work out right. But if you have an intention and if you are purposeful about nourishing your body, taking care of your mind and developing your spirit, the mind-body-spirit connection can be amazing and you can achieve the most unbelievable aspects of your health and well-being. And that's why Suzanne and I are so excited to present today's show where we're talking about things that can really help you in your journey to evolutionary wellness. And the theme for our first show is self-love and empowerment because it's exactly where we need to start on our evolutionary path. So we are going to engage in practices to improve our self-love. So that sounds kind of funny, like am I supposed to be hugging myself? <laughs> Where do you start when it comes to something like that? And it's really easy when you do it. So the first thing that we want you to try is look in the mirror, give yourself a big smile and say, I love you. The first time you do it, it might feel a little bit funny, but the more you practice doing that, the easier it will be, the more you'll believe it, and the more others will believe it, and you'll just be radiating that love everywhere that you go, right? Right. It is a really powerful practice, and I was surprised at how difficult it was to do the first time. But honestly, the more that I did it, the more that I really started to believe it, and then I really became more empowered. And in my book, Wake Up, I talk a lot about self-love and empowerment because it really is an important way to progress and to live your life on purpose. And in today's show, I'm going to be interviewing Suzanne about her book. We're also going to be showing some highlights of one of her amazing presentations. 
and then we'll do the same for me, right? Right. That'll be so much fun. We're going to show highlights from presentations that we've both done, as well as learning more about how and why we wrote our books. And we are very excited for you to see all of that when we come back. to share with you a presentation that my friend Suzanne Ross did in California. She is an integrative wellness specialist and you will see her passion and joy for what she does really come out in this presentation. I know you'll enjoy it. Today is going to be the best day of my life, and tomorrow I'm going to wake up and say the same thing. Every day I wake up and say, today is the best day of my life, because I know that no matter what the conditions of my life are, that each day is a precious opportunity to shine my light, to radiate love and compassion, and to spread joy and kindness. Several years ago, I set out on a spiritual path that awakened me to the grace, beauty, and symmetry of life. I became aware that the life force that was illuminating me was the same life force that illuminates all living things and beings. And the power behind that force was one thing and one thing only. The pure, unconditional love of the source expanding into eternity. It's the power that ignites the creative spirit within us and all around us. And I knew then that I wanted to live in the light of love and to unleash my creative spirit. But there was something holding me back. There was something limiting me. And I knew exactly what it was. E-G-O, my ego. I knew it was the source of the limiting beliefs I had about myself. And so I said, game on my creative spirit versus my ego mind. Overcoming the limitations of our ego is the biggest challenge of our lives. But it's what we're here to do, to rise up out of our egos so we can set our spirits free. And so I became determined. I was aware that the limiting beliefs I had about myself were coming from my past experiences. So over the course of the next few years, I created a process by which I could reflect on the most transformational experiences of my life, and I could heal them, and I could learn from them. I developed powerful ways to balance my ego and spirit with daily practices that helped me to transform them from limiting ones to much more empowering ones that expand in love rather than contract in fear. I discovered that I could wake up by awakening through reflection. 
And it's what inspired me to write this book, because I want us all to wake up. I want us all to be able to liberate our minds from the limiting beliefs that we have about ourselves, others, and the world around us. So how does this all work? Just close your eyes and think about a time in your childhood when you felt like you weren't good enough, when you felt like you weren't smart enough, or brave enough, or attractive enough, when you felt like you weren't worthy. The one that comes to mind is the one that needs to be healed the most. And now what I want you to do is I want you to picture that child standing right in front of you right now. And I want you to say to that child, you are good enough. You are smart enough, you are attractive enough, you are strong enough, you are worthy. And then I want you to literally reach out and hug that child and say, I love you. I love you and I thank you for persevering through all the challenges of childhood to become the amazing adult that I am today. Because today, I am amazing. Open your eyes. Now what I'd like you to do, remember that thought that you shared with your neighbor earlier? The one I told you to hold on to? Well, it's time to let it go. So now, instead of saying, I am not enough, turn to your neighbor and say the truth. I am enough. Doesn't that feel good? Yes. Don't ever let your ego tell you that you are anything less than perfect. Because you are all that and more. And when you start intentionally creating, you begin to direct your reality in a way that serves the highest purpose. You begin creating positive experiences that attract an abundance of health, wealth, and prosperity into your life. You see, I believe that the meaning of life is to create and the purpose is to evolve. It's what we're here to do. So instead of being blown around randomly by the experiences that arise, we can direct them. When we start to live our lives in this way, they take on a much deeper meaning and greater purpose. When we activate our highest traits, we can intentionally create more meaningful lives and consciously evolve towards more enlightened ones. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the highlights from my presentation. And more importantly, I hope you learned how we can let go of the limiting beliefs of our ego mind. And speaking of limiting beliefs, Susie Garcia has written a wonderful book called Psych to be Skinny in which she explores how our limiting beliefs about food and eating can limit our potential in life. So I will be interviewing her about her book as soon as we come back. Have you ever been standing in front of the refrigerator, the door open, looking, and you don't even know how you got there? It's like you were transported from the living room and suddenly you're in front of the fridge and you think you're hungry, but then you're bored. Or have you ever gotten off the phone with somebody and you're just so anxious that you end up eating like a whole bag of chips? Those are examples of the bored eater and the anxious eater, two of the 10 personalities that I talk about in my book, Psych to be Skinny. And what this book does is it gives you strategies for Cognitive therapy is a different way to think, and also what foods are going to be best for your personality. Maybe you're a situational eater, or a period eater, or maybe you've been recently dumped and that's causing you to have some different eating habits. All of those are addressed in this book that I've written with a co-author as a doctor of clinical psychology. I'm Susie Garcia, award-winning registered dietitian, international best-selling author, and motivational speaker. I would love to share this book with you. You can find it on my website, which is thesusiegarcia.com forward slash author, and you can 
purchase this book and start your own journey to overcoming emotional eating. And what I recommend is that you just go to the table of contents at the beginning and look at the different types of eaters because one of them is going to resonate you with more than another and start with that chapter and read that one and then bounce around a little bit and what you'll find is is you're probably sometimes anxious, sometimes bored, sometimes situational and oh I forgot to tell you each chapter has a special recipe that uses the types of foods that are best for that eater and I've got meal plans in the back to help make it super easy for you to be psyched to be skinny. How to stop emotional eating, enjoy healthy weight loss, and keep it off for life. Welcome back. It's going to be so much fun to interview Susie Garcia about her book, Psych to Be Skinny, How to Stop Emotional Eating, Enjoy Healthy Weight Loss, and Keep It Off for Life. Susie is a registered dietitian, and she's received many awards for her work. She is also an international best-selling author. Susie, it's so much fun to interview you today about your book. I read your book long before I met you. <laughs> so is your book a diet book? Well, no it isn't. And the title, Psych to be Skinny, is really meant to bring up the emotions that go with eating. And it's a lifestyle book. I don't want people to feel like they are on a diet. It has the word diet in it. How awful is that? <laughs> and the other problem with something that seems like it's a quick fix is you don't gain the habits that you really need to gain. So in this book, I've identified 10 different types of eaters. There's a bored eater, an anxious eater, a recently dumped eater, and each one has a different personality type and different things that they deal with. Well, there's no doubt that people eat for emotional reasons. And it looks like in this book you've offered several strategies for all different types of eaters as well as recipes for different types of eaters as well. What an interesting approach. How did you come up with that? Well, you know, I co-authored the book with a friend of mine from high school. She's a doctor of clinical psychology and we connected at a mini class reunion and started talking about some of the different issues that came across in our practices with our clients and very many people struggle with emotional eating so we collaborated on this book and she identified some of the uh, cognitive behavioral things that can be improved upon in exercise and then I identified the types of foods that each different type of eater is going to be better off choosing from and then put together some recipes and they're actually meal plans um, in the back of the book as well. That's such a unique approach. And I'm curious, what's the most common type of emotional eating? You know, I find that a lot of people are, well there's, there's a few, but the bored eater and the depressed eater are similar, they're not the same, but they tend to be the most common that I run, a, run across, um, especially the bored eater. And that's the person that works all day and they come home and then they sit on the couch and watch TV and get bored. And then they go to the refrigerator and they grab something to eat and they don't really even know if they're hungry or not. So a lot of the strategies that are helpful for the bored eater are the mental aspect of being able to identify whether they're hungry or not because oftentimes there's just, uh, oh, it's seven o'clock and my favorite TV show is on, I have to pop a bowl of popcorn. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have anything to do with whether that person is hungry or not. So it's recognizing those triggers or mental things that happen. And then for the foods that I came up with, which was really fun for this uh, particular eater, is having colorful foods and actually making sure that you have to prepare foods because a lot oftentimes the bored eater will grab easy foods. Mm -hmm. It might be potato chips, it might be you know something that's already prepared and all of those processed pre-prepared foods are less nourishing whereas if you're eating colorful foods like a red bell pepper with some hummus and you actually have to cut it up, all of a sudden you're not as bored, right? Because you're doing something. You're engaged in the process. And so right? those are the types of things that are, you know, that we go over for the entire book, each different type of eater. I know for so many of us, the TV is a huge trigger. 
I, I have a direct connotation between eating and watching TV. It's like I prepare something to eat and then I walk directly to the TV so that I can watch the TV while I eat it and I'm not engaging in the eating process or even really enjoying my food because I'm not even focusing on it. So these strategies sound really effective. Yeah, thank you. And what you're talking about is is mindful eating. Right. And that's and that's part of the process and part of, you know, having a kind of a date with your meal. Exactly. So that you uh -huh. are one of the strategies in the book for one of the eaters is to basically set a candle and enjoy your food so that you're not just rushing through it and, and not enjoying and tasting the food. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't taste anything, then you don't get the enjoyment out of it. And then that kind of causes another whole wheel of emotions to happen. Exactly. And it's not just the TV, of course. It's our computers or anything that distracts you from the eating experience. So really making an intentional effort to have a nice environment and mm -hmm. just create a whole eating experience, right? Right. It, it, it makes so much of a difference. And I want to share a, just a quick tip, if I may, uh, talking about tasting your food. That first bite that you take, that is like the most delicious bite. That's the one that's like, oh my God, this is so good. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's a strawberry or a bite of pizza, whatever it is. And the second bite is you still get that sensation. But by the time you get to that third bite, that it, it all tastes the same. Mm -hmm. And so one of the strategies for the I deserve it eater, which is the person that is like, hey, I'm on vacation, I deserve all of this, or I'm at an expensive restaurant, I'm going to order everything, and they just end up overindulging and feeling guilty. But one of the strategies is three polite bites. Because of the idea is that you get that yumminess on the first bite, and by the time you get to the third bite, you've had that satisfaction. So that's the idea of sharing desserts oh, or, right. mm -hmm. you know, maybe I'm just going to take one French fry off of somebody else's plate because then you get that flavor and that satisfaction without having to eat the entire plate of French fries. So that's a, one, of, one of my favorite tips. Yeah, no, book. I like that. Three polite bites mm -hmm. because that is so true. It is. So what's the biggest takeaway that someone can expect when they read your book? Honestly, the biggest thing that they're going to find is that there are more than one eater at all different times. Oh, you might say, gosh, you know, I really think I'm that anxious eater, and that might be what you are most of the time, uh -huh. but then you're going to connect with the bored eater, and you might connect a little bit with that, you know, situational eater, and so I think the takeaway is that you can be different types of eaters, and there are strategies for all of them. And the overall goal is to learn habits slowly so that if you want to lose weight, you lose it slowly and you can keep it off for life. And if weight loss isn't your goal, it's going to teach you how to energize your body much more successfully and with good, clean, wholesome foods. Mm -hmm. I know when I read the book, I could relate to being all of these different mm -hmm. types of eaters, not just at different times, but in different phases of my life as well. So we can really all benefit from this great book, Susie.